Welcome back to Swanson's Garage, everybody. As long as we're in the sheet metal mode, I've been kind of digging out some more of these sheet metal projects. I just took out the toolbox lid, um, got the hinges freed up. Those were stuck. We actually got the original screws were still in there, so we know what kind to use there. Little tiny straight bladed flathead screws. I got the latch freed up that was rusted solid too and bent up but it straightened out we actually got the original uh other part of the catch there it was still on the remnants of the wood toolbox so let's see if we can round up because i only got one toolbox lid so we need to make another one of these so i gotta see if i can find some correct hinges and correct latch hardware and digging through what I have, I have a piece of tin here, I think is the right gauge to make the lid out of, so we can probably make that. Um, yeah, just kind of cruising along with these sheet metal projects, kind of getting sidetracked. And we could make up another one of these as well, because I think I need a second one of those. I think the Michigan one was all bad. That is the lower panel for the firewall. The dash it was on the bottom of the dash there. So that should be a pretty straightforward project as well. Trace and cut out a new one. Okay, so I measured and marked out, cut out a blank for our toolbox lid with our extra quarter inch lip for all the edges to bend up the lips. So I gotta nip out the little corners here now and then I will clamp it in. I made up a simple hammer form. Uh, it's just a piece of plywood that is the exact size of the inside of that. So we will take that, we will put a piece of metal on top I got another piece that has been uh, just beveled for ease of hitting the hammer and then we will hammer form that edge because I don't have a uh, box and pan break to bend them so we will just hammer form it. it won't take long at all. Got the corners notched out. Uh, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just using a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade in it. So I'm just trying to emphasize that you don't really need anything super fancy for a lot of these projects. I mean, a few C-clamps, a couple scraps of wood. I mean, if you didn't have a jigsaw, you could cut this with a cutoff wheel and a grinder, or heck, you could use a hacksaw. I mean, there's lots of different ways you can do this without anything super fancy. So don't be intimidated by a lot of these projects. If you have the motivation, you can do these. So now you can see why I have that re uh, little relief cut in there. So you got some access for when you start hammer forming it. Now, if you have a straight edge there, it just makes it a little bit harder to swing the hammer. So I put my earmuffs on and uh, do a little tap, tap, tap in here. Well, that was a workout. Uh, lesson learned. This stuff must not actually be 16 gauge like I thought it was. Uh, if you guys have been watching the channel for any length of time, remembered I did a very similar uh, process to make the toolbox door on the 612. And I used 16 gauge for that. And that went really easy. No problems at all. Well, this must be a little bit thicker because it formed a lot harder. I mean, I had to whack it with a little bit bigger ball peen just to get it kind of roughly in place. And then I hit it with the body hammer to, to get her uh, flattened out a little bit more. But yeah, <laughs> okay, that's a uh, lesson learned. That's not 16 gauge. It'll be good. It'll be nice and strong, but let's take it out now and see how it looks. So I pulled the caliper out and remeasured. Yeah, this must be like 14 gauge instead of 16. Okay, now I know. Turned out really well though. Looks just like the original. You won't be able to tell the difference once they're sandblasted up. 
And I actually prefer using a little bit of crusty steel like this on a project like this. Because if there's a little bit of pits and whatever in the new steel, that's okay. To me, it'll look a little bit more authentic that way. Um, when you have a perfectly perfect shiny piece, even if it is a full cosmetic restoration, you, you can just tell. I don't know how to explain that. Do you know what I'm talking about? You can tell when somebody replaced the sheet metal versus you know, actually original tin. Because even if it's nice, perfect, flat, there's still there's that little bit of imperfections in it. You can just kind of tell. Um, looks good, though. I'll have to clean up this edge just a little bit, to burr it a little bit. And then I think we'll go up and uh, do a little sandblast in here. I don't know if I want to go outside though today. It's icky out there. It's blowing. It's cold. It's a balmy maybe 10 degrees out there today. Cold, cold, cold. That's all. We, we haven't seen it above zero temperature in well over a week here. Getting tired of it. <laughs> kind of funny too. I had to sacrifice my uh, hammer form. I couldn't get it out of there. It was sandwiched in there so tight. I couldn't couldn't pry it out of there. I had to break it apart in pieces to get it out of there. Kind of funny. Uh, other good news. Talked to Dad, and he has a couple of hinges just like this at home in his boxes of miscellaneous stuff. Um, so if I ever get there or he ever gets back out here, we'll get them. And then we can get them riveted on the new one. We just have to round up a latch yet. That might be a little tricky to come up with one because I want one as original uh, even if we have to make it or whatever because um, you know with this pointed end like that you might think wow you can just because a lot of modern ones are just square here right um, but I want it to be like that because you see all the riv rivets excuse me from the top side so it's kind of important that the, it be correct, at least the way I do things. You guys know I'm a bit touched like that. I want everything just so. So we'll we'll come up with the right one. Like I said, if we can't, we'll modify one or make one. That's kind of the fun of the project. <laughs> kind of funny. Just thinking, saying, oh, there's the silver lining and everything. Yeah, okay, I made this out of too thick of material. That's nah, not really a problem, right? You know, the silver lining... Just thinking about it so it'll be stronger right which is a good thing so you know I got a little kid up there on the tractor at a show or whatever and they uh, stand on that without knowing any better I don't think they're going to uh, hurt anything quite uh, quite rigid you know as far as that goes I think I could probably <laughs> step on it without doing any uh, yeah, look at that. I I can stand on it without even bending it, so we're good. Good solid lid. <laughs> Brr, it's still cold out there. It's a balmy 12 degrees below zero. I just got back from the shop. I was doing another batch sandblasting. So I sandblasted up the original door and tuned up all the edges, you know, sharp, whatever. So that's basically good to go. Uh, sandblasted the new top, same story. Cleaned up all the edges, nice and smooth. Uh, so all we need is some hinges and latch, and that project will be done as well. But we're as far as we can go with that until we get hinges and latches. Uh, I finished up this brake lock lever, got that sandblasted and the pin and washer for it. Same thing, took down any sharp corners on it. So that's essentially ready to go. Uh, sandblasted the spark plug tube wire. Wire tube, rather. Um, so I'm having trouble. I talked about this in a past episode. I figured I'd get some tubing to make one of these. I can't find this size tubing. I didn't think that would be hard. It's, I believe, 1 in 3 sixteenths tubing, thin wall tubing, and I can't find that size. So I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do there yet. 
These are belt pulley, uh, shaft, washer, and nut. Uh, bolts to hold that cover. This cover here. I have to dress. You want to die over those threads yet to chase them. That's the bolt that holds the reverse idler shaft in the transmission housing. Uh, cleaned up these two little parts, the oil fill spouts, because uh, just because they were little and easy to grab. A couple of bolts to chase there. Um, we'll have to get some spring wire. I believe I have this size at home, so we'll have to get some of that here as well too to form up a spring. And then, like we've talked, we'll have to get a new cap cast eventually. We can make some gaskets now for them. And for the bottoms, little things like that just to keep ahead of the game. It's going to be kind of, uh, you know, we'll get all these things done and we'll have a shelf full of parts. And once we get towards the end of this restoration, we're actually going to, it'll probably come together kind of quick because it'll be literally taking finished parts off the shelf and putting it on the tractor. So that'll be kind of fun when we get to that point. But I'm almost getting to a point again where I'm going to have to start something else because like we've talked here recently, a lot of these things I'm waiting on something. So I will have to start on something else while we're waiting for parts. Um, so yeah, I'll have to figure out which of these things I will tackle next. We got lots of options. I'm uh, thinking maybe start on these fan assemblies. Uh, see what we got there because I know we'll have to get some. See what we have for availability for bearings in there because I know those will be junk, and we'll have to make some parts. I'm sure because there's all kinds of goobered up stuff there. So. Yeah, let's take apart some fan assemblies here. See what we got to work with. A little before shot, how it all goes back together. Should be pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah, right. So. This bolt here threads into this shaft, goes through. Of course, it's all crusty inside there. Fine thread bolt. What are the odds we get that apart without breaking that bolt off? Slim to none, I'd say. Huh. I can't believe I got that out of there. So this is another washer on the back side. Got this one out too. I'm assuming that's the same thing, but it's probably just stuck on there. And let's continue taking it apart. Fan blade off. Four bolts, and that comes off. That would be like that. There's a gasket here to seal the hub. Plug. And then, come on, focus. Nut and whatnot. So we'll take that apart. This bearing is completely roached. Well, there's your problem right there. Those individual parts, they ain't supposed to be individual. Just got to get the inner, or the outer, excuse me race out of there and that hub will be ready to sandblast. Yeah, this one's got the same bearing. Oh, well, this one's rusty. At least they match. A lot of pile of garbage. Well, we've got it all apart though. I even got the screw for the oiling and this one had already been converted to a greaser. Got them loose. So yeah, the only thing left to actually remove is those inner races, and that might be a bit of a challenge, especially on this one, because it's all rusty in there. 
Well, you start cleaning up parts then. Maybe tomorrow I'll uh, do another batch of sandblast and stuff. Getting a few things done here today. Got some parts sandblasted. The magneto mount bracket and bolts. The broken one is cleaned up. So someday we can address that. Both fan hubs are sandblasted. The good fan blade is cleaned up. Both mounting brackets are cleaned up. Both of these are cleaned up. It's the spindle assembly forum. Even though they are wore out. So we'll have to figure out a way to either fix them or make new ones. You can probably see all the gouges in there. Because that has to be nice because that is your basically your inner race, your Hyatt roller bearings roll against that on the inside and then on the outside there is that thin race in there if you can see that or not so I figure out how am I going to get that out of there well got to thinking about it and I have this set of blind hole bearing pullers that I picked up uh, years past that I needed for a special project. I used it one time and they've been sitting there so I got to thinking I wonder if that would work. So sure enough that's one of them is the right size and you can't see in there but you go down inside there you grab there's a washer on the back side of that and then the slide hammer and that's coming right out of there so let me pull it out the rest of the way and then we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, there it is pulled out so you can have a better view. That's the split inner race then, so when it's in there, it's compressed, and that zigzag is almost tight. Uh, there's these little holes. Uh, there's probably like two or three of them. Depends on the size of the... I thought I seen a number there. Yeah, I think there might be a number there. That'll be good for trying to locate new parts. Anyway, there's holes there. I think originally for removing and installing, there's a tool, I think we may have talked about this when we were doing the ones on the final drive there, the axle. There's basically like a rod in there with a pin that you can go in there and you twist it as you install it so that collapses it and you can roll it in. These ones are easy enough, you can just squish by hand basically and put them in there. I've had to do the same process with like the 612 fan hub, same same kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, there's that washer on the back side of it, which goes up against a little shoulder on the inside of that. So when you go to reassemble this, there is a seal that goes in there first, uh, like a felt one, I believe. That's what it was in the 612. I have to look in the parts book to see what it calls for in here, but I'm guessing a felt seal. And then that washer sandwiches that seal in there. And then this race holds that washer tight. Everything just holds everything else in there. Um, so now I can see if I can do the same process on this hub or not. This one was a lot rustier, so that one might put up a little bit more of a fight coming out. We will see. Then I'll clean this up and see if there is indeed some numbers on there. And I'll have to do uh, another send out another email to Jim there and see if he has those bearings available or not. Um, speaking of bearings, I don't think I ever mentioned. Maybe I did. It gets hard to remember what I tell you and what I just you know think about telling you. Um, I did email him and see if those races for that intermediate shaft the outer races and the outer races for the pinion bearings if those were available or not because uh you know if you remember there was a little bit of pitting in some of them not enough to may probably be a problem but just to see what was available and they are indeed available but they were i think like about 150 dollars a piece so <laughs> that adds up rather quickly it's uh, $600 for 
per tractor. So $1,200 total if I need them for both tractors. Uh, so that's why I've been kind of thinking about that, whether or not I want to replace them or not. I probably will, but it's just a, it's a lot of money to spend for races. Anyway, let's see if we can pull these back out. Yeah, that's what I was afraid might happen. So that rusty one is stuck in there good. It ended up just deforming that washer and pulling it past the race. So on to plan B, I guess. I'm not sure what that is yet. Might try to get in here with like a chisel or something and see if I can maybe peel it away from the side a little bit or something. Ah, uh, bummer. Well, that wasn't too bad. I ended up just getting a thin chisel back behind the one corner of it, kind of bent it, got in there with a pair of needle nose and kind of twisted and pulled it out. It wasn't too bad. And yeah, I was right. You can see there is numbers on them. 4169. Same number on both of them. So that'll help tracking down parts. I'll take up a few measurements now of what, uh, basically what the length and the shaft size are or were supposed to be for this. And that'll say what size bearing they were going to be. I can look in the parts book to see if it calls for any number, I guess. Uh, most of the time that that hasn't been very helpful as far as numbers it just kind of usually tells you bearing and that doesn't help much for tracking down new ones so i emailed about the bearings last night we'll wait to hear back on that i chased all of the threads and got some new lock washers for all the hardware here chased the threads in the hubs as well so those are ready to, I'll probably give them another sandblast now to clean out the insides now that I have the inner race, or outer race rather, removed. Um, we'll have to figure out a game plan for rebuilding or remachining new shafts here. But I'm not sure of any really good way to fix that. I think I've probably talked about that already. We'll have to uh, try to do some research locate if I can buy any of these special washers or if we're going to have to fabricate everything from scratch because we got I'm missing one of those thrust washers that holds it one on either side there to clamp that onto the bracket missing one of them I'll probably look through all my jug of miscellaneous washers to see if by chance I have anything that would work for that and then I'll have to do some measuring of all these other special washers there's a bronze washer in between two thrust washers um, we'll have to see how wore out all that stuff is i'm guessing it's probably rather worn so we're probably looking at new pieces for that luckily there is a very good parts breakdown cut through in the parts manual of the fan hub assembly shows how it all goes together gives good dimensions and sizes of all of the parts and then you can reference the numbers and it gives you more information for each individual part and washer so at least we know what it needs to be so the only part I'm really missing is the knob and correct uh, stud, let's call it, that go into the top to adjust your fan belt tension. There was just random bolts in there, not correct. So I uh, texted a friend, Dave Harrington, who has a beautifully restored 1525 of, a, of his own. Uh, I'll put a picture of that knob that I'm looking for in here. He was gracious enough to draw me up a little blueprint of the size and shape of that knob. Yeah. 
and we're going through our junk and we have these two knobs from a transmission jack that dad and I picked up and parted out because it was junk we set, saved a few of the bits and pieces of it uh, that might come in handy in the future and then among them was these two cast knobs so I just dug them out and I was checking cross-referencing on the blueprint that Dave sent me there and uh, I think we could probably turn this knob into the correct knob because this as it is is not the correct size and shape but it's big enough if I cut these ears off here round it a little bit more here we'll have to do a little bit of filling in the hole here cut it off to the right height here I think we could probably turn it into a correct looking knob and it'll have kind of the right texture then too being a cast knob um, we'll take out all this shaft and replace it with the correct stud so thanks again Dave for that information I very much appreciate it uh, I think that'll probably wrap up this for now uh, there'll be some like I said modifying and part searching and rounding up so We'll come back to this project when I round up some more stuff to make uh, another video of maybe putting all this stuff together. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned it, but I think I'll bring back the fan blade from the Michigan Parts Tractor. It is not all bent up like this one. So I think we'll probably end up using that one uh, before we attempt to straighten this one out. So. Until we get all those parts and pieces rounded up and whatnot, I think I'll sign off for now. I thank you all for watching. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I appreciate it. I read them all. I try to reply to them all. Uh, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, hit that. Be sure to share these videos. If you like what you see, tell your friends. They might be interested in this stuff. Uh, thank you all for watching and hope to see you soon.